Welcome to Chris Horner's Corner in today's edition. I want to get a little bit more when I'm talking about the last video on how not to bunk and I want to get into the comments from that video. A lot of people asked because I brought up that I didn't do intervals ever throughout my 25 years of racing. It's true, I didn't do intervals. That's not to say I didn't do big, big time efforts. It's to mean I didn't do intervals. The difference between big efforts and intervals is that intervals are set up normally as one minute on, two minutes on, few minutes off, back to one minute on or your two minute on interval, depending on the length of it, and then wash and repeat over and over where your rest period is the gas off and you're resting for that whatever one minute, three minute effort, lack of effort that you're doing, and then going back into a max effort again. Now I did big time efforts throughout my training. Make no mistake about that. I grew up in San Diego, California. We had a training crit on Saturdays that of course gave you multiple efforts and to a degree, kind of intervals, right? Every time someone attacks, you go full gas, the group gets brought back, you go with the next attack. That's almost an interval, but not exactly. Those are more big efforts because you're forced to doing them when the race is, is making you do them. When the other riders in the race are going hard, you have to go hard in order, order to follow it. When I, mean, when I mean by saying that I didn't do intervals is I never looked at my computer and said, okay, let's go from zero right now to one minute. Now, have I gone to the, to the top of a climb from the bottom to the top and said to myself before I got on my bike that day that, hey, I'd like to go out to this climb. Let's call it Palomar. It was about a 55 minute climb if you're going really fast, 58 if you're going good. And if you weren't going good, you did it over an hour. So there could be times when I thought, hey, let's go out and do Palomar here in San Diego, California. We'll do a big effort all the way up Palomar. But when I get to the climb, I'm always on feel. No matter what I had thought previously the night before, when I'd go out training and doing big time efforts, I was always with the ideal of going off of feel first and foremost, most important. I mean, throughout every year of my career, always going off a of feel. If I thought I was going to go out to Palomar Mountain and ride hard that day, but I get to the bottom of Palomar Mountain, I start doing a big effort at the bottom, and I realize a few minutes into it that I just don't feel good, I shut it down. I never follow a program that says, today you have to do this. Now at some point in time, of course you have to do some efforts in your training without a doubt, but never, never in my training am I going one minute on, two minutes off, followed by one minute on, followed by two minutes off, followed by one minute on. Those are what you call intervals. Big efforts, did it every day of my life when I was feeling good. If I wasn't feeling good, I didn't do big efforts. But if you grew up in San Diego, California, and you did the Tuesday night crit, you did the Wednesday tri ride going up the coast with the best tri ride professionals in the world who all lived in San Diego, California, training there on that ride at the same time that I'm getting my training in the early parts of the season. You know, if you're going pull for pull with an Ironman champion and you're going pull for pull with a biathlon champion like Kenny Souza, Kenny Souza was a monster on the bike. And when you're going pull for pull with riders of that caliber, you're putting in big time effort but none of them are considered intervals in my book. Intervals are completely different and miserable and something I would have probably kept me from racing my bike for sure because I never enjoyed doing them. I realize there are some people out there that enjoy doing intervals and some people that need to do intervals because that's their mindset. It makes them feel better mentally at the end of the day when they get off their bike if they can say, I completed what I needed to do that day. My personality was completely different. What I needed to do to feel good when I got off my bike was to enjoy riding my bike that day. Then I wanted to ride it the next day. So did I do efforts all the time? Like I said, Tuesday night crit, Wednesday try ride, Thursday try ride. Saturday was the Swami's group ride and it was all the pro riders plus a couple of the triathlete guys would get out there. And sometimes on the Swami's club, we had five, six, seven of us all out there on the front driving it. So every time you come to the front in the wind and you do a big acceleration, you're doing a big effort. But that is difference between an effort and between intervals. Now, one other thing I want to cover for sure is I want to cover when we're talking about nutrition because we see one of the comments there from What's Up Cycling. What's, what's Up Cycling? I, he puts in there that he didn't eat before his training. Well, his training is an hour and a half. And a lot of times that's what you folks are doing and you're reading a little bit wrong into some of the sayings because when I'm talking about training as a big time professional, I'm talking about doing four, 500, 600, 700 miles a week. I'm not talking about an hour and a half ride. If you get up 
and you only need to do an hour and a half ride. And when I look at the, the comment here from the Watts app cycling commenter here, he says that he never ate. Well, you only rode an hour and a half. You don't need to eat if you're riding an hour and a half. You start going over an hour and a half though, and like you put in your comment there that you're at 85%. I agree with how you're training. I think it's perfect. And I don't believe you need to eat if you're going out there for an hour and a half right. Because most likely if you had a big dinner the night before, you're waking up at 8 a.m., you're jumping right on your bike to do an hour and a half at 85% effort, you can get by without eating then. Now, you do need to eat when you get off the bike after an hour and a half of riding that kind of effort for sure. Because at some point in time, you're going to need calories to replace. But if you're doing an hour, hour and a half ride, and even if you're doing it with some effort, do you need to eat? Most likely your calories that you had the day before and certainly at dinner, if you ate properly at dinner, can get you through an hour and a half. You start going two hours though, what I've always seen throughout my career when I'm doing the group rides, a lot of guys could do an hour and a half attached to my wheel, but we start getting into a two hour ride and two hour plus ride, all of a sudden it takes just a little acceleration on some little bump of a hill and you've dropped the whole group of guys who only train an hour and a half. I truly believe the big difference when you really need to start training big miles comes into effect that you start having to ride the 400 miles a week, the 500 miles a week like the pro guys. But if you're only riding one and a half hour, can you be good for an hour and a half and up to two hours? For sure. Do you need to eat for an hour and a half? I don't believe you do. Do you need to do intervals? Well, if you listen to me, you don't need to do intervals, but you do need to do efforts at some point in time. And remember, if you're doing the Tuesday group ride, the Wednesday group ride, the Thursday cr training crit, and the Saturday group ride, those efforts are built in there. And I'll probably get into about 50 to 100 efforts in each one of those group rides that I've told you about down in San Diego. And if you look at and ask any of those guys from the group rides, was I doing big efforts? Absolutely. Are they intervals? They absolutely are not because I hate doing intervals. So it's always important when you're training to think about, okay, how much calories do I need? Hour and a half ride, do you need to bulk up and put a bunch of calories in for that? Absolutely not. But after the ride, do you need to eat to recover from the efforts that you did for an hour and a half? At some point in time, absolutely. You gotta put some calories in. But if you, like I said, if you had a good dinner the night before, then the next day definitely won't require putting in any time, any big time calories for an hour and a half ride, unless of course you were gonna do massive effort throughout that ride. But at an 85% effort, no, I gotta agree with the commenter here. And I believe his training spot on when you're doing about an hour and a half ride, really you don't have to put in calories. So be a little careful and mindful of what I'm saying throughout the videos when I'm talking about how to go to the Tour de France or how to do your Grand Fondo ride that's a 100 mile ride. I'm never talking about a ride that's an hour and a half, but maybe I should put, start thinking about that and putting those into my responses when I'm doing videos here so I could be a little bit more clear because there's a big difference between an hour and a half and holding, needing calories. Those can be covered from the night before, but once you start going over an hour and a half, you better have started with some decent calories that morning and have some kind of food in your pocket. Like I said, otherwise the bank is empty. I hope this clarifies a little bit for the commenters out there that put so much, so much time to comment and talk about how you didn't do any intervals because it's true. Just about every pro out there, I bet if you took a survey, it would be almost 100% of the pros out in the European Peloton do some intervals, especially now since I'm no longer racing over there. But at, throughout my professional career, I was probably one of the few people that never did intervals and always enjoyed riding my bike, enjoyed doing the group rides and getting those big time efforts. And then always mentally, I was ready to ride hard the next day. Keep in mind guys, I never rode easy. That going in for easy rides is pretty rare. Throughout my time, most of, the, most of my training efforts that were, that were easy days, I probably still average about 190 watts on those stages, on, on those days, excuse me. And then when I'm riding no, more normal days, I was averaging about 200 to 220 watts for the whole ride, and that's not neutralized. That's real watts, real power, counting zeros and counting highs and lows. That's, that's certainly not erasing some of the ride. That's 100% of, of the whole ride from zero all the way to the end of the ride. So if I did a five hour ride, I'm still 200 to about 220 in my days when I was trying to go 
big time over in Europe. And then of course my big rides would be something above 240 watts and up even up to about 265 watts that I'd average for those 100 mile rides. Those are the kind of efforts I was doing through a five hour period and that's not neutralized. Like I said, that's all zeros and all miles from mile one all the way to the finish of the ride. So hopefully this video clears up a little bit more. And of course, I'm gonna go more in depth and explain deeper on how my training went but I know already the time's getting up there a little bit for you guys viewing it's early in the season hopefully this helps you out and clar clarifies the things a little bit more from the last video of, of how not to bunk like and subscribe I'll see you guys on the next edition real soon